Welcome to the version 7.3 release training of Forecast Builder. So here are some of the highlights of, of this version. The first is including Marine into the ability to populate. Um, we're also adding the ability to use the new MBM PPI-01 and PPI-06 created in the National Smart Knit release 9.1. Something that we had prior to version 7, but we lost in the last couple of release, releases of Forecast Builder is the ability to run over a specified area, and we got that now into 7.3. For the Burgoyne P-type offices, these are um, some test beds, air areas in central region. Um, we've resolved the issue of some locations not having a P-type assigned. We've also added the ability to look back at six runs of the HER EXP for smoke, since the HER version 4 is the first one there to have some smoke information in it. Um, previously, it was the, it was only two runs of the HER EXP, and unfortunately, that wouldn't catch the longer extension there for the HER EXP. We've also done some technical code changes enhancements. We've created some maximum apparent T utilizing the max T and min T. I know that was frequently requested when we were in dealing with some heat situations. And finally, some changes to the way that we do grid saving and send into ISC, and we'll discuss more of that here momentarily. So first, I want to discuss about the marine inclusion. On the right is an example from a marine office in the Great Lakes where you see that you've got a new element box listed there for, for, marine, for marine elements, and you can check their wave height, period, and direction. And on the left is the population source, and you can see for the Great Lakes and the oceans, wave heights is the same for MBM. But because MBM doesn't provide wave period or wave direction, we have to go to alternative sources at this present time. Um, in this case, Wave Watch 3 for the Great Lakes and the nearshore marine prediction system there on the oceans. So for um, all things related to marine, um, things like freezing spray, as well as these elements, we're going to utilize the all underscore marine edit area. Um, that should already be defined in your system. If not, you'll just need to make sure that that is defined as such. And then, um, unrelated to marine, we've uh, moved snow ratio over to the public uh, elements. Um, is that something that we should get populated routinely? And it's always there prepared if you do end up having winter. So with grid population saving and sending, one of the changes we made here is 7.3 was to help a little bit here with ISC traffic. As you know, the for those that utilize the cron, per, the cron purpose, there are a lot of elements being created and sent over the AWIPS WAN, um, and that just puts a lot of load on the WAN itself as well as everybody's AWIPS um, EDEX servers. So to help that, um, what we've done with Forecast Builder is now only touch and save a grid if it's going to be different from the existing grid. Uh, so the greatest impact you know, you'll see to this is going to be during quiet weather, because in these situations, grids like QPF, Snow Mountain, Ice Accumulation will probably be zero. Um, and so the new grid that would get populated is, it w would be zero as well. So you know, no need to go through and do all that. Uh, and so that helps, again, reduce the AWIPS WAN traffic ISC and again the AWIPS EDEXs. So just in summary here, you know, don't worry if you don't see a grid update when you go to populate it or you know you go through the precipitation type creates you know snow ice step that it doesn't update. It's just that we're trying to manage a little bit of the grid saving. And it overall it helps make things run a little faster as well. So let's go and talk now about the MBM PPI-01 and PPI-06. And I have to credit uh, Ted Ryan here, the Sudan of Fort Worth, for both developing this method and for the training that's provided here. Before we dig in too much into that, we need to discuss a little bit of background, and that's with the POP grid. Um, the POP, as you know from whether you're looking at your point and click or NDFD, um, it's always referred to as the POP-12. Um, and it's used for precipitation verification and also uh, when you come out with those words, chance of precipitation blank percent. Uh, the POP is also utilized to create the words for the weather grid. Um, and therefore, what we've done for years, decades to the POP is often break it up more temporally um, to help give us some higher resolution weather grid wording so that you can do something like a chance of showers in the morning, then 
showers likely in the afternoon. Um, the max value of all those broken up pop grids is then populated into the um, 12 hour pop, if you will. And this is essentially calling the pop a precipitation potential index or PPI. And um, the actual definition of the PPI is shown on some of our local uh, local pages. And it just says, you know, it's an idea to show forecaster confidence at each hour across the forecast area. Specifically here, you know, the PPI is excelling at conveying the entire 12-hour period's chance of precip, precip and showing the most likely timing of it. <laughs> but PPI has no statistical basis um, in the hour-to-hour -hour chances of precipitation. So let's just take this image here for an example. Um, we have delineated over North, North Texas into Oklahoma this area of 15 to, to 30 pops. But statistically, this is, not, this is not true. Again, we're just trying to show what's the, um, what would be a 12-hour chance of precip and the, and the timing of it. In uh, NBM 3.2, um, or actually I should say prior to it, the, the POP01 was a switch because P P they tried a, a PPI, um, which was attempt to do exactly like what we do in the forecast, but um, there's a lot of uh, feedback that suggested that was not, not good, and a lot of it was the PPI itself was a little rushed. So... Um, here with MBM 3.2, again, they switched over to POP01, which is a more statistical approach to POP. Um, in fact, more like a true one-hour POP, if you will. Um, but uh, these, and these, I should say, work very well for a specific hour-to-hour -hour forecast, and they'll show your hourly precip time, timing well. The overall problem with the one-hour POP is it's sometimes much lower than the 12-hour POP. And we can actually see this if you use the MBM 1D viewer, we'll just take this one, one site, and you can see that the one-hour pops are only halfway up to the maximum of the 12-hour pop. And again, this is a function of being them trying to attempt a more true statistical nature to the one-hour pop. And this example here shown is something that you might see in, say, random air mass convection. In fact, in random air mass convection, the one-hour pops could be even lower than this, and your 12-hour pop could still be up at 90%. So if you were just to use the hourly pop and, make, and do our approach like we've done of taking the max of that to make a 12-hour pop, the result is going to be a dry bias because, as you can see, the max of the one-hour pop here on the left is only a little over 50%, whereas the MBM is saying a 12-hour pop should be uh, a 90. So one idea would be, well, maybe let's try and change our system around here a little bit um, so that we are using the true one-hour, true hourly pops. That would require partners to be educated on it and also some changes in the way that how we define our weather grid because right now a 30% um, you know chance of rain on a you know and the PPI grid goes to chance but in reality a 10% one hour pop is probably high enough to dis to utilize the chance word in for a weather grid so to try and simplify <laughs> all of this what we Ted Ryan's new technique here applied to the national smart nets um, in 9.1 9 is to convert these true one-hour pops to a PPI. So how this approach works is what we're going to do is find a ratio of the maximum values between the 12-hour pop and the one-hour pop. And then what we're going to do is stretch all those one-hour pops by that ratio. So here what you see is that now that one hour pop turns into a PPI, and that PPI at that maximum hour there you saw on the left is, to, is now shoved all the way up to the top where it is to the pop 12. And you'll also note that just by doing the stretching, we also maintain the temporal integrity. So this is nice. We get to use the benefit of the MBM temporal timing inf information and still be able to push this into our current dissemination system. And again, with this release of Forecast Builder, we are going to be able to utilize these PPI-01s 
for the short term and then the PPIO6 for the long term pop initialization. And to do all this, you just have to do a little configuration adjustment, and that's denoted in the documentation. Switching topics to some other technical code changes. Um, one of the issues that um, we've had with Forecast Builder and it exists with other programs as well um, is that sometimes AWEPS does not update the, each individual user's Forecast Builder files after the install. <laughs> Um, and what this happens is, when, when this happens, people run into errors with Forecast Builder, and sometimes you got to do a cave restart. Uh, and sometimes that doesn't even fix it. Um, so what we've done in this release is provided a separate get script that will go through each user's um, cave data directory, where all the do data is, you know, call a cache from cave kind of loading in, so it doesn't have to go out to the servers, but, and then it will help to refresh the files. Uh, and so just go through and delete the files, and then when Cave starts up, boom, it will will fix the files back up. Um, another thing was to use 32-bit float instead of 64-bit. Um, did result in some speed of memory improvements. And then another, again, it, approach here to improve the speed a little bit is to remove any lingering weather, wear statements. Uh, we utilize masks instead. So with that, um, th this concludes the training. Again, if you have any questions or feedback, uh, we always welcome that. You could do that either through the Forecast Builder NWS chat room, post a comment uh, on the forum on the Forecast Builder VLab site, or feel free to email us um, at, this, at the email address nws.forecastbuilder at noah.gov. And thank you for listening.